Okay, so hello, my name is Lauren. And I'm Kyle. And we are the coaches at Team Cosmic Bodies. And today we're gonna be going over... Body dysmorphia. Yeah, a very um, big topic here that we're gonna be talking about. And um, I think if you're a competitor, you can definitely, everybody can relate to this. And no one really talks about it that much on um, Social media, there's not really any big YouTube videos out there. So yeah, we're going to talk about body dysmorphia in bodybuilding. And yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's happening all over the world. People look at magazines and they see what, you know, they should look like or whatever. I mean, it's not just yeah. bodybuilding, but definitely once it's more. Once you do a competition and once you get extremely lean... And once you're like backstage at a bodybuilding show and you're sitting back there with all these lean physiques around you, your perspective on what lean looks like changes. Okay, I'm just saying, I'm just saying that. You're, especially for me, I, when I go to a national show and I'm backstage and all these girls and men and, and physiques and all these good looking people are backstage and they're all shredded. Like, yeah, my perspective of what like lean looks like changed since I was, you know, since I was in high school, like it's changed, you know, um, definitely. It's all perspective. It's, it's, it's perspective. What's yeah. Relative to what's going on in your life right now, your confidence, your self-esteem and, and whether you can be objective or not. And social media isn't helping. <laughs> No, social media doesn't doesn't help the situation. So yeah, when you're like getting ready for this this competition, you are looking at yourself every single day in the mirror. You're looking at yourself. And you don't really see that much progress, to be honest, because you're looking at yourself every day. But then you see your family member, you know, let's say four months from you've been dieting, and they're going, whoa, you look completely different. You know, they're like, whoa, you, you, you've lost 20 pounds. And you're like, oh, really? I don't know. You know, like us on the other end, we're like, oh, okay. Okay, yeah, I guess I look, I look better. It's, it's weird. It really is. It's just, it's becoming really competitive in the conditioning aspect of bodybuilding. And it's not even actually becoming more competitive. It's, it's, well, it is. It's become more competitive. But it's just more prevalent to... All these techniques and strategies people use are becoming more efficient. It's easier these days with all the information we have out there to get super shredded. And and so yeah, it's just it's more competitive. It, more people are, are seeing how they can get shredded. And and so yeah, these longer preps, right? Like I prepped for 40 weeks and to see myself and I was looking at myself every day. Cause I'm trying to stay on topic here with this body dysmorphia. Um, I was looking at myself every day. And so you kind of get addicted to the progress you do see and, and your and it gets warped. Your, your mind gets warped on, on what you think is lean. And that's why it is really important to have a coach there. You know, you, you can't make these changes. You can't objectively do this yourself. That's why it's good to have a coach there to get you through this thing, you know, to get you through this thing the right way because you in your head are thinking you're not ready or you're thinking you need to be leaner or you're thinking I need to do more cardio because guys, we do get weird when we're prepping, you know, it's like more, more, more result, 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 I'm not seeing the result fast enough, more cardio. And it's, that's why you have a coach there to be like, Hey, you're making progress. Look what you did last week. That's what we do with our competitors. You know, some so we got some girls out there that are like, let's go, I wanna go, go, go. We're like, hold you up, are. you're making a lot of progress. Go look back 10, um, 10 weeks ago, okay? You're doing good. Okay, so how about Kyle? Now you go into post-show and, you know, put, just putting on five pounds of fat, we think we're fluffy again. So just kind of go over that too. Yeah, I just... All right, so body dysmorphia, it's like we kind of did things by the book and we were able to be objective and we had really a good support system around us. But we do know how it feels um, 
on the minor end because it's almost like a spectrum of body dysmorphia because um, everyone has it, a little bit degree of it, uh, even non-competitors. Um, in a way, right? We it's like if it's a big spectrum, and this is like at the end where it's like, okay, you, you really just don't like the way you look. We're getting into anorexia now. You aren't feeding yourself. This is unhealthy. And then there is the, um, you know, less extreme, which is I think where we were at. But oh, yeah. you know, we can still discuss it a little bit. So yeah, I got very lean, five percent body fat. Women to 8% body fat, very, very, very lean. We did it in a long, long process. So it was slowly chipping away. We're looking at ourselves every day. It's hard to be objective. You, you, you almost get addicted to the progress, seeing the scale go down, seeing the new lines and shreds. So it, it becomes this almost addiction for that, that short-term progress of like, I'm improving, I'm improving. That dopamine hits you of you're doing well, you're impressing your coach, you're impressing your followers or friends, social media wise, um, maybe your business is doing well. There's a lot of things that go into play here. Um, but, so yeah, at the end of my prep, I was so lean, lost 40 pounds, and I just felt like I had more to dig, and I could get leaner, and I was actually losing muscle at that end. Um, which is part of the sacrifice. But yeah, it, it was it was definitely just super hard and I could see how that becomes unhealthy for a lot of people. I wasn't as aware of how lean I was. But now that I look back at the pictures, it's weird if you look I back. Go, yeah. I go, "Wow, that's impressive, Kyle. You got <laughs> shredded. A lot more shredded than a lot of people do get." And it was because of time and adherence. I, I dieted for 40 weeks and I also stuck to the plan and didn't snack. I, you know what I mean? Like I stuck to the, my macros. I went hard in the paint, went hard, hard dieting. Um, so yeah, I, it's crazy that at the end of my thing, I was just, and then my contest prep, I almost thought, I don't know. It's like, obviously, objectively, I knew I was really lean, but I didn't see myself as shredded as I do when I look mm -hmm. back at the pictures. So yeah, I was in a vulnerable place, and I think that's why some people get into the yo-yo dieting and the and the binging, and then they put on fat, and then they almost think they're they oh well I've already gotten so fat I might as well diet again. They get into this endless cycle of eating a lot and and then dieting again. Uh, so yeah, it's good to have a coach. It's good to be objective, mm -hmm. take a lot of pictures, and and look at the progress in that way yeah so i'll go over my experience here just like how kyle was saying how you know you you look back like i i definitely you know right now i look back and i'm like whoa i was i was so shredded and lean and at that time when i was so shredded and lean i was thinking i got more to give like i got i got more to lose so it's just so weird to be where i am right now and look back and and think like Okay, Lauren, you were you were good. You were shredded. You're completely lean, and um, I can kind of talk about you know post show, like it's just it's just competitors and, and us in general. Like if you know after a show we put on five pounds, okay, we go, oh no, I'm, I'm getting fluffy. You know, it's like we kind of freak out a little bit. Like oh no, I'm my lines are going away. I'm I'm not as lean anymore and. And it does it does mess with you. It real it really does. Even though you're still lean compared to the rest of America, like we are still pretty lean here. I mean, if somebody on the street looked at us, especially looked at us now, he's thirty pounds up. I'm twenty pounds up. People on the street even go, "Wow, you guys are in great shape." Like we get it all the time. What do you guys do? You guys are in great shape, and it's just like. Yeah, we, we do look lean right now. We look we look we have muscle. We look like we lift we lift weights. So But if just... I posted a picture of my back now, obviously I have more fat on it than I did thirty pounds ago. And that's sometimes where people get twisted and they're like, Oh, I've put on all this fat. Yeah. Um, it was really hard to get that lean, you know. So it's really important to have goals and to stick to the goal. <laughs> yeah. And and whether you want to do the reverse diet or the recovery diet, you do have 
and depending on how lean you got, you do have to put on some body weight to get your performance back up, to then progress and stick to that goal of improving and, and putting on muscle and putting on more. You it's know. so important. It's it's so important because I, I just I it's so important to put on weight, you know, after your show because like it's how you're gonna get stronger and like when I when I was squatting when I was 120 pounds, it didn't feel good. Uh uh, I did not feel good. You didn't um, feel that strong, yeah. I didn't feel yeah. From I a mean, leverages standpoint. Yeah, I mean I feel like I, I'm more flexible now. I don't know why. I, I really do. I feel like my squat has improved. My leverages have improved. I'm able to add more, more weight, more and stable. it's just, it's a good feeling. And, and some people like post show, it's like three weeks post show, and they go, Oh my God, I need to do a mini cut or something. Like they, they, they get, or, you know, they're like, Oh you, my God, I need to do a mini cut and lose 10 pounds real quick. I'm, I'm, I'm just even like, Even when no. they're six months, like if you're a veteran, okay, uh, it, it might be a little different. But like if you're a newbie and you've put on weight 10, 15, pounds post show and you actually got really lean you don't need to be doing a mini cut anytime soon if it's only been six months you might want to gain for eight nine months you know before even thinking about doing a mini cut um yeah yeah it's just it's just like i, I feel like people you know they, they put on 15 pounds post show which is totally okay to do like yeah. especially if it's been six months i mean oh, that's yeah. That's okay, and then they do that, they gain the 15 pounds, and they're probably, actually, they're feeling good in the gym now. But then they look in the mirror, they take a selfie, just like how they were when they were completely shredded, and they go, oh my God, this is, I don't look good, I need to do a mini cut. Yeah. And that's, honestly, that's not good. You shouldn't do a mini cut, because right now you're feeling amazing in the gym, you're, you're deadlifting, you're squatting, and you're raising the weight finally, and you're finally putting on some muscle, and, Doing a mini cut is gonna hold you back. It's gonna bring you back. Yeah, especially if you have momentum going on in the gym. Yeah. And that's why social media and and being like an online fitness coach or whatever, if it, if this is your job, like models and all that, it's uh, mm. it can be tough with the body dysmorphia and in your livelihood. So, um, you gotta yeah. find that balance and try to you know look at it objectively. You know, take progress pictures every every month or two, and stop checking yourself out in the mirror so much, and and stick to the plan. So yeah. do your fat loss phase. That's fine. Do your fat loss phase. Do your mini cut or whatever. But when you're in a gaining phase, um, find some balance within that, and and stick to the goal, and then get back into the diet or whatever to reveal the progress because you've been making progress if you've been gaining for a year or two or whatever it may be. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really happy I'm I'm not like this this Instagram fitness model. Like yeah. no, I'm I'm a competitor and I put on weight during my improvement season and I don't take those those pictures all the time. Like I don't have to get ready for this photo shoot where I'm gonna be in my bathing suit. So yeah. the thing I Lauren has done that. a good job of is like setting a nice standard for herself of okay, I'm sticking to the goal, I have an improvement season for a year, or two years, or whatever it is, and yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick to it. Yeah, I'm gonna get the most <laughs> and, and then it, it kind of puts this other idea in the back of your head to say, okay, it's fine that I'm fluffy right now and I'm 20 pounds above stage weight or whatever it is, 10 pounds, 20 pounds above stage weight, because I will diet again and I will have a better physique and a better package yeah, and what Kyle always says, like, the hard part is putting on the freaking muscle. <laughs> That's the freaking hard part is putting on the muscle. I can diet whenever I freaking want. I can get stage lean. I can do it. I can get shredded. It happens. I think the hard part is sticking to the plan, well, regardless. Yeah, any if plan. If you're getting <laughs> lean or if you're growing muscle and eating in a surplus, it's just sticking to the plan and, like, yeah, just sticking to the plan and putting your time in. Yeah. And so, yeah, fat loss phases, we say it's easy because it it happens quick. We could both lose 10, 20 pounds in the next how many weeks. But to put on 10, 20 pounds of muscle, take five years sometimes. I mean, yeah. And depending the, on your training age. So. Yeah, and just this whole bodybuilding thing, it, it is, some people get like, 
you know, you see a lot of competitors compete all of the time. Like a lot, even NPC competitors. Like I'm NPC, com I'm just an NPC competitor. That's why I'm always so lean. And it's like you might have some type of like anorexic body dysmorphia thing where you don't feel comfortable putting on some weight post show. And there's a lot of there's a lot of girls out there that that do that. This they, they compete all of the time because it's like an excuse to be shredded and lean. Yeah, that's why training is so. If you're a physique athlete, training saves my life. Strength training is a big part of being a physique athlete, yeah. and so if you're able to focus on that performance and that progress, it can really save people's body dysmorphia thoughts. Um, yeah, really, really, really can because you start focusing on your performance and feeding yeah. yourself for that and. And having extra body fat on you to help your leverages with your performance and your squat and your deadlift or whatever it may be, bench. Um, and so, yeah, and then you can focus on making goals and sticking to that plan towards that goal within your your strength. Um, and this could be not a one rep max. Like, you don't have to become a power lifter. But say, hey, you're, you know, if you're lifting 100 pounds in the, on the bench or the squat and then in five years – for five reps and then in five years you're able to do 200 or 300 pounds in the squat for five reps you've probably put on muscle and therefore you know when you do do that fat loss phase yeah. you're gonna have so much more muscle have a better figure and not be an NPC competitor anymore you can be IFBB yeah you can be an IFBB competitor there we go you can become a pro so I think we hit the topic of just the body dysmorphia yes Kyle goes through it I go through it I go through it when I'm when I'm prepping like it, it's, it's a weird thing it really yeah. is like I, I it's definitely something everyone goes through when they get completely shredded and stage lean and if you are a first-time competitor and you work so hard to to get lean you don't need to blow up after no. you can take a slower six eight week where you gain Six reverse, pounds, reverse out ten, of your You know shirt. what I mean? Like, yeah, you can do a slower reverse unlike us where we did kind of a faster route out. Um, and that can maybe help mentally. Yeah. Um, and then it might take a little longer for your hormones to get back to normal, but um, it might help mentally. Yeah, to, post, uh, like for a first time yeah. fitter, like Kyle said, you don't have to gain 20 pounds and like a Yeah, it's almost like this, yeah. which I want to do a video on this soon, but like an endless recomp. Because when you say recomposition, body recomposition, we usually mean like you lose fat, you gain muscle, but that what that could be a journey. Like, yes, you could have a body recomposition that could last a couple weeks or months or a year, but then you could also have this endless body recomposition that could be five years or longer, and it's like this journey of, of if you weight train eat a high protein diet, you go through a fat loss phase, then you gain some of the fat back. You're still gonna be lean, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you can yeah. still be like, like look at her physique now at 140, then her physique two years ago at 140. It's different. So yeah. it's like this scale weight doesn't matter. It depends on how you look, how you feel on the inside, and and yeah, her progress in the lifts yeah, and stuff like that. Because muscle is weighs more than fat. So that's, that's another thing. <laughs> well, no, but it's, it's yeah, you're putting on muscle and you recall. It just looks better you look leaner with with more muscle on you yeah and yeah and you'll have a you know you'll be able to eat more calories something I do agree with is, is muscle takes more calories mm -hmm. and, and more protein and yeah to yeah. keep it believe fat. me it's hard for me right now it's hard to be 20 pounds up but I keep telling myself it's gonna be so worth it and um, yeah, I mean, yes, it's, I look at myself in the mirror, I, I'm like, whoa, I'm a little, I am fluffy I, right now. There's I think no a lines. good point. I think a good point to make also is, let's say she wasn't a competitor. She probably would want to be more closer to 130 right now. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. if you're a lifestyle person and you're not like trying to be aggressive within muscle gain, it's fine if she was 132, 135. She didn't have to be 140 if she feels a little uncomfortable with yeah, it. So yeah, if you're yeah. a lifestyle, you can be a little leaner and like have the abs or whatever and be yeah. somewhat lean. Just I get to the next level. I get the yeah. 10 pounds more down. I get so, to 120, which and is that, like... And the same for me. Like right now, I probably would want to be closer in the 180s. 
Because yeah. you'll have abs Lower 180s and, and look good in I pictures was, and yeah. stuff. But so if I was just like a fitness person, lifestyle, want to look good mm -hmm. in the gym and train good still, I wouldn't be at 160 to be a competitive bodybuilder. And I wouldn't be at 190 trying to gain muscle and be aggressive within my, my surplus. Yeah. I'd probably be in the high 170s, low 180s, and then just slowly try to you know do some lean gains over... Yeah over you know five ten years yeah and, and the end of the day we're natural competitors so we have to do this we have to put on this weight to put on the muscle you know as quickly as we can so um okay i think that's it i think we hit everything i think we hit all the topics for body dysmorphia and the bodybuilding and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you have any questions that you want us to answer in a youtube video just Comment down below, okay? We love answering these questions, all right? So, okay, that is it. Bye.